students i hope all of you are doing well it is the end of the week and in this week i try to do my best to keep you busy watching my videos reading the different chapters in the course pack and taking quizzes based on that reading in my experience i find that students do better on the exams when they are tested on smaller rather than bigger volume of the material this is why we have as many as four exams including the first one i would like to take this time and go over some of the information and i stress some of the information just to give you an additional idea or ideas of uh, how to study and what uh, you need to study for the exam clearly i am not able to go over everything considering you have read several chapters in the course pack and you have watched about a dozen or so of different lectures i only have about 15 minutes for this review but i'm hoping that what i will share with you this time around will help you to focus maybe on some things and you will be able to get better grade than otherwise you would okay so let me give you just a few clues um, uh, regarding the important things that you need to know. First, remember that you need to be familiar with any terms and anything that is in bold in the course pack, okay? And so some of the questions will be based on the definitions and other things of that nature of terms found in the course pack. I also stressed earlier that you need to um, consider the tables and graphs and you need to be familiar with what's in it okay of course some of the questions will be also based on the information that i shared with you in my videos okay let me give you some examples question which nutrient contains nitrogen okay anyone again i cannot hear your answer but i hope all of you shouted protein notice that uh, um, information in the first chapter of uh, the course pack in table 1-4 where you have all the different elements found or uh, listed that are found in different types of nutrients okay you need to be familiar with that okay another example zinc belongs to this category of micronutrients what is it trace minerals and again, notice table three, you should be familiar by now with both major and trace minerals. These vitamins are fat soluble vitamins. Not only you should be able to familiar to, to recall the fat, but also the water soluble vitamins. Okay, this is the most basic information based on simple recollection. And again, you have this information in on uh, the second table in chapter one energy yielding nutrients are utilized in making energy in this cells organelle what is this talking about mitochondria okay I'll notice here you have mitochondria in bold okay energy yielding nutrient is is in bold which means you need to be familiar what they are and then mitochondria notice it says cells have specific types of organelles that make energy they are called mitochondria and so you need to be familiar what mitochondria does in the cell the inner part of a grain kernel is called this well not only you should be familiar with the inner part but all three parts of the grain kernel okay the outer shell sometimes referred to as bran and then germ and the endosperm okay all of these terms are in bold in your course back the process of disposal of nutrients from a given food item is called this this is mainly referring to grains but not only it is refining okay in contrast white flour is a refined product okay white flour is a refined product why because part of what's originally in the, in the um, grain kernel is removed, okay, or disposed of. 
B vitamins are important in preventing these health conditions. What are they? Well, there are many, but I listed a few, including these in the course back beriberi, pellagra neurotube defects. The following foods are the best sources of folate. I don't want you to memorize how much of each of the food item um, contains in terms of folate, but if you look at this graph, you will see that the best sources are soy, which is bean, garbanzo, bean, white, bean, okay, and then you have lentils, which is bean, and so on and so on. Beans are the best sources of folate. Beta-carotene is the best known phytochemical in this family of phytochemicals. What are they? Carotenoids, okay? Several phytochemicals are listed in the course bag, including, notice, carotenoids and beta-carotene, okay? Hydrocephalus is an example of these health problems. Okay, what are they? There are two defects, okay? And notice, again, you have the information here. Um, spina bifida, microcephaly, anencephaly, all of these are listed as types of neurotube defects. These phytochemicals are found in onions, one of my favorite foods. Disulfide, trisulfides are actually listed some others, but uh, you need to be familiar with those terms again that are involved in the course pack. Red meat includes all of these. What are they? Well, there are five, pork, beef, lamb, horse, and goat uh, meat, okay? So be familiar with red meat, processed meat, white meat, okay? What is the definition? What are the examples? These two are the most prevalent uh, causes of mortalities. Well, depending on which country we are talking about, they will be somewhat different. Remember, heart disease and cancer are the leading causes of mortality in the United States. Stroke and ischemic heart disease were the leading causes of mortality in China. A study in which a group of individuals with a health condition is compared to another group without that health, that health condition is called what? Okay, it is an epidemiological study, but what is it called? It's called a case control study. Okay, the cases are those with condition, the controls are those without the condition. Okay. Another question based on the, the information on the research. The study mentioned in the previous question would be considered a what's the word? A retrospective study, okay? Notice we already know that some individuals have a condition, right? And some don't, okay? And so this is a retro, this is looking back, okay? A research study in which scientists base their results on observations is considered the epidemiological. I don't know if I if I was very clear in outlining this. I may not have used this term observations, but let me add this then to what I recorded regarding nutrition research, okay? The reason or oh, one way we recognize between uh, um, uh, epidemiological versus um, experimental studies that epidemiological studies are observational studies, okay? The dietary guidelines for Americans call for individuals to consume less than how much? of any energy from added sugar, okay, 10%, okay? The same goes for fat, by the way. The three leading causes of mortality in the U.S. include, okay, these are examples of both epidemiological and experimental studies, be able to, to list them. The dietary reference index include the following, what are they? The estimated average, 
requirement, right? The RDA, what does that mean? The AI, and then the tolerable upper limit, okay? The following grains do contain gluten, okay? You need to be able, again, this is uh, listed in the course pack. I mentioned that grains are so important that when we, re, when we uh, get rid of some grains that contain gluten, we need to re, um, replace them with those that do not. So be familiar with those grains that contain and those that do not contain gluten. A prudent diet can be described as, what is it? A prudent diet is one that is based on predominantly fruits, veggies, whole grains, and may have small amounts of meat, but uh, limits um, process or maybe even avoids processed meat and limits red meat. The following constitute benefits of cooking or heating foods. Okay, what are they? Again, they are outlined in, I believe it is chapter two in your course pack. What is the principle of listing ingredients on a food label? Remember from the bulkiest by weight to the least bulky by weight, very simple. List all mono, dye, and polysaccharides, okay? Not only I want you to be able to list them, but when it comes to disaccharides, I want you to be able to list what two monosaccharides when linked together in a condensation reaction, we are familiar with this term condensation reaction, okay? Constitute disaccharides. In other words, what lactose is composed of? what sucrose is composed of, and so on. What is the principle of listing ingredients on a food label? I think I addressed this already. List different types of lactose intolerance. Remember primary, congenital, and so on, and so on, okay? Summarize the health effects of both natural and free sugars, okay? Remember some are actually beneficial sources of natural sugar are beneficial why added sugar including actually um, artificial sweeteners not necessarily so especially when we look at things like diabetes obesity and things of that nature okay let me give you a few other tips um, number one uh, when i was a student when i uh, was preparing for the exam i would write myself questions for example i would just study about uh, monosaccharides and disaccharides and polysaccharides and then I would write a question which of the following are polysaccharides and then, then I would try to um, list them from memory you see if I was not able to then I would pick into my notes but the next time I would ask the same question I would already recall you see writing and reading out line is very helpful because we use all the senses we use the sight and not only we read silently but we say or read out loud and that's that helps us to remember i don't know if you know anybody in the class if you do get together and discuss some of the um, the issues we discuss uh, ask yourself questions that may be helpful again to recall remember you are to take the exam separately individually not with someone else that would be violation of uh, the honesty and integrity but you are welcome to get together and study okay um, another thing i want to share with you is that you have 50 question questions on this and the next exams and you will have one hour one hour for uh, completing um, the, the the exams now you may have time to pick find some of the answers especially perhaps those in the course pack and or if you have taken good notes from my lectures maybe but you will not have enough time to look for answers for all the questions so prepare some questions are very easy i also have some questions that i call applicable questions applicable or applying the information you learn so it's not only just the recollection of facts although the bulk of questions will be just the recollection of facts okay so these are some of the tips that i wanted to share with you i hope all of you will be will do well if you have a problem with the internet outage or things of that nature 
and you were not able to complete the exam, please let us know. Either send me an email or send an email to my teaching assistant. Good luck. Thank you.